Hello, everybody. This is episode 79 of Mouth Dancing Podcast with your host, Young. Thank you for tuning in again. I just got back home from a haircut. Uh, I took the train over to Capitol Hill. I mean, I walked a bit because there's a Seahawks game going on right now. And when that's happening in my neighborhood, the parking situation is pretty hellish and the traffic's pretty bad. So instead of driving, I took the train over there <clears throat> and I got my haircut. I haven't had my haircut since I don't even remember when. It's been like maybe two years even. I shaved my head last December and I've just been growing my hair out since then. But I haven't had a haircut. I've just been trimming it a little bit here and there by myself. Which means my hair got pretty messed up and uneven looking, right? <clears throat> and it was just getting kind of poofy. So I finally went and got a haircut. It's a really nice day today. Must be like one of probably one of the last nice days left this year before fall and winter hit in Washington and it becomes like perpetually gray and dreary. But yeah, on the way back from the my haircut, the train was really packed with a bunch of Seahawks fans who were going to the stadium. They're playing the Falcons today. But yeah, Seattle people, they don't really know how to act on a crowded train. They, they kind of freak out. Everyone's like screaming and laughing and talking about how crowded it is and telling corny jokes and just acting kind of like buffoons basically. Probably because they just don't really ride crowded transit that often. But it just made me feel kind of, I don't know, the whole, it was kind of awkward and a little bit embarrassing to be around. I wonder how they would react if they were on like a rush hour train in Tokyo or somewhere like that, or New York even, they'd probably lose their shit. I wanted to talk about soy this week. You see on the internet there's a lot of memes about it, right? And a lot of jokes. People will say someone's a soy boy to... It's an insult, like it's how you describe a really weak man. Say that person's a soy boy. And this whole thing comes from the idea that if you eat soy, it increases your estrogen and makes you more feminine. Supposedly, you'll grow some man boobs and just become really weak and not like a super alpha tough guy. Supposedly, that's what soy does to you because it has estrogen in it. But this is not really scientifically true. It's not, it's not completely accurate. Soy has phytoestrogens in it. And phytoestrogens are in lots of food. Lots of plant or vegetable type foods that you eat, that humans eat. I actually put um, a little graph or chart in this episode's video. But it shows all these different foods with phytoestrogens in them like there's wheat and apples and garlic even barley and these things have phytoestrogens in them too but no one really talks about them turning you into a woman if you eat them I think a lot of it honestly has to just do with plain bias towards Asian foods it always has a reputation for being like weird or kind of dirty. Like people freak out about MSG too, right? But MSG is completely harmless. And they just really like to focus on soy for some reason when it's not the only plant-based food with estrogens in it. And from what I've read, the estrogens in plants or vegetables that we eat, it's not the same thing as the estrogen that your body produces. So it's not like eating vegetables is going to turn you into, you know, a female or something or make you 
less masculine and less aggressive. It's just a bunch of、um, internet pseudoscience that really took off because people are just dumb, for one, and also biased towards Asian foods. So don't believe any of what you hear about that stuff on the internet because it's a bunch of baloney. And you know what they say about bologna, right? It's one of those processed. What are those kinds of meats called? Does it have nitrates in it or something like that? I forget the term, but supposedly it's not good for you, right? But yeah, American bologna is also pretty different from like real bologna that you get from Italy. American bologna is just kind of like, kind of reminds me of like a hot dog almost, except it's in a different shape. And slightly different texture, but the coloration looks really similar. It's like pink for some reason, and it's just all one homogenous like texture and color and consistency. I don't know how they do that with meat. It's kind of weird, but that's why they say bologna in in America. When something's bologna, it means it's not very good. It's probably phony. You know, just BS basically. And finally, I wanted to talk about what gravity does to our bodies. Gravity is constantly pulling on our bodies, and it's just absolutely ravaging our bodies at all times. I think it plays a big part in、um, the aging process, probably, because you know it just makes you like sag and wrinkle. I mean, that's part of it, other than your body. Just wearing down, but gravity really、uh, does a number on you. Like it makes your、um, balls sag, for instance. Probably your breasts, your buttocks, maybe your chin, even all the parts of your body that you want to keep, you know, nice and tight and high up on your body in their original position. Gravity is just like, nah, that's not gonna happen, buddy. I'm just gonna keep yanking on your body parts, and over the years, it it really accumulates, right? And then you see an old guy's balls, like in the in a sauna or something, public bath, and his balls are like down to his knees, basically. That's what gravity does to you. I know not a lot of Westerners go into like public baths and things because kind of prudish, but. In Asia or even Europe, some places it's not that weird to go to like、um, somewhere like that salon or spa and just be around other naked people, and that's when you can really see it. I mean, you could even see it in yourself, of course, because no one's body is immune to the effects of gravity. Neither I nor you nor any other mortal being. It's just gravity. Is always there. We should be grateful to it, you know, because we need it to keep things in place and whatnot. But but it also has its effects on our bodies that pretty much we can't do anything about. That's just nature. It's physics. It's science. And that's just the way it is. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Maybe it would be kind of cool if we could put ourselves in some sort of an anti-gravity chamber when we're sleeping, maybe, so that we age a little bit less. I don't know if that would work or not. Also, I'm not sure if you can sleep in anti-gravity. Can you? Well, astronauts sleep somehow, so maybe that would work actually. Maybe that'd be a, a cool anti-aging device, right? You have to get used to sleeping like that, though, where you're just floating around. Just think about that. Think about gravity. Sometime it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, we need it, but on the other, it makes our body parts sag and droop and just get kind of sad and old-looking. That's the aging process, and that's just life. So we have to deal with it and accept it. And on that note, I'd like to end this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. Bye.